Please welcome Dr. Sanaz Masumi. Our next speaker is an Academy Award nominee, a writer, director, producer, cameraman, editor, and founder of Black Valley Films. His documentary work includes Oscar-nominated The Garden, Independent Spirit Award nominee Our Town, and the critically acclaimed Fame High. His most recent documentary, Shot in the Arm, began in 2019 as an exploration of record-breaking missiles outbreaks around the world and the disinformation that helped start that epidemic. The COVID-19 then happened and he found himself in a unique position to tell the story of the virus under the virus, the virus of disinformation, conspiracies, and anti-science. Please welcome Scott Hamilton Kennedy. Wait a minute, but there's a thing that I have to do two clicks at the same time. Anyway, well, let's get let's get into it. Um, it is just such a great honor to be speaking here today amongst uh, luminaries who every day are attempting to make patient safety function a little bit better. Not for the benefit of one individual, but for the benefit of as many people as possible. Uh, but again, not for the benefit of one individual, but for the benefit of as many people as possible clearly a very difficult task and I commend you for it. Today I'll be speaking to you briefly about my latest film, Shot in the Arm, a film that uses the conflicts and disinformation around vaccines to highlight the significant dangers these represent to science, public health, and democracy. To be honest, I didn't know when I started this project, thank you so much, to be honest, I didn't know when I started this project in 2019 how much rational thought democracy, and even our social contract would be under threat in 2024, but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. So let's start by taking a look at the theatrical trailer for Shot in the Arm. In 2019, I started working on a documentary about the rising rate of measles. Why is this happening? Because people are choosing not to vaccinate their children. And how some were trying to politicize science. Anybody who tells you, trust me on the science, you shouldn't trust them. Our citizens are part of a medical experiment you are putting on them. It is our children that have been affected. They believe what they're saying. Unfortunately, it's a false belief, and their anger is directed in the wrong place. I watch reports that measles is deadly. I think we have to question what we call deadly. If Ebola is sweeping the country, talk to me then. I had no idea what was coming next. Lockdown day one. From the beginning of COVID, our family struggled to make sense of what was going on. I did think that the arrival of COVID would be the end of the anti-science world. Were you right? I was never so wrong in my life. This is a hoax! The vaccine itself is gonna kill far more people. Conspiracy theorists play into distrust. Don't trust the experts. Don't trust the scientists. It's going to be a disaster for mankind. I absolutely see the pandemic as an opportunity. On January 6th, these are the anti-vaxxers. You've been sold a lie. Dell is selling a lie, and he's selling it hard, and we're just offering the truth. Science isn't political, at least it shouldn't be. Vaccines have allowed us to live 30 years longer than we did 100 years ago. That's what vaccines can do. This is Vax Talk, the podcast for people who prefer not to get polio. To counter disinformation in a compassionate way, we have to get good information out there. You were given a broken and beautiful world. You will take this world in your hands and make it less broken and more beautiful. Once the truth doesn't matter, then it's not a democracy anymore. I always like to pause in that picture. No, no hissing. Okay, that's fine. Um, as a documentarian, one of the most essential tools is finding the right people to capture uh, the complexities at the heart of these stories. And yes, that does also mean including some villains who sadly will be the focus of my talk today. As some in this room may already know, these three men from left to right, Del Bigtree, 
Robert Kennedy Jr. and Andrew Wakefield have become very successful at using disinformation, fear and often downright lies around vaccines and public health to con convince some people, mostly mothers, that they, not the public health officials, are looking out for their children's best interests. Sadly, they are not. And one of the most heartbreaking backstories, truly a parable of how anti-vaxxers and conspiracy theorists are a global threat, is the 2018 and 2019 measles story in Samoa, a story surprisingly few people know about. And just for fun, by a show of hands, how many people know of the 2018, 2019 measles story in Samoa? Put your hands up higher, Ken. Pretty good, pretty good, but su still surprising the how much you all know about global public health. Um, well, let's see how people feel about our thankfully ex-2024 presidential candidate, Robert Kennedy Jr., and now Trump cheerleader, after they see what happened in Samoa. Samoa. 2018, two babies were given the MMR. Can you tell us your version of that story? I, I don't remember well enough what happened. I know that there were a number of children who were... I didn't go to Samoa, for, by the way, for anything to do with that issue. Telephone brings you a breaking news on the death of two young children, both aged one years old, who died soon after being vaccinated at Safotu Hospital. Yes, I'll come. The ba baby was shaking and um, and turned yellowish. Even the even the eyes, the whole face, he was gone. While it was still a mystery exactly why these children died, the prime minister immediately declared a ban on MMR and all vaccines. They took this historic action because of a sincere belief that the MMR vaccine can cause autism, a developmental disability his own grandson suffers from. Two babies dead in Samoa. It's a heartfelt story. That video is up to 174,000 views and climbing. Share it with everyone you know. This is how we are changing the world. This is one of the things we're doing. Through his nonprofit advocacy group, Children's Health Defense, Robert Kennedy Jr. praised the Prime Minister for his decisive action. And in 2019, he even visited Samoa with his wife, actress Cheryl Hines. We feel very honored to be spending time with the Prime Minister. And my husband wants to move here. <laughs> for almost a year, the message to the people of Samoa was that vaccinations will harm or even kill you. And in the fall of 2019, the consequences of those messages became crystal clear. This small Pacific nation is in a state of emergency. More than 4,000 Samoans who've contracted measles since the outbreak began. Most of the victims are young kids. Sorry. By Wednesday, the death toll from last month's measles outbreak in Samoa had risen to over 60, the vast majority of those children. Samoa has shut down schools and minors from public gatherings and mandated that all citizens get the MMR vaccine. As dawn broke, the mass mobilization began. Medical teams are traveling down every back road in Samoa in an effort to get everyone vaccinated. This is a painful lesson we have learned from the current crisis. In a significant change of heart, the prime minister publicly received the MMR vaccine reinstating MMR across the country. I assume you know the Prime Minister changed his mind and got the MMR vaccine. I have no idea. I, I never talked to the Prime Minister of Samoa about anything to do with vaccination. Months after his visit to Samoa, as the cases and death toll were rising, Robert Kennedy Jr. wrote a letter to the Prime Minister. He began by sharing his condolences, but quickly pivoted to being, quote, dismayed but not surprised to see media reports that link the current measles outbreak to the so-called anti-vaccine movement. And he went on to suggest that the outbreaks were not caused by inadequate vaccine coverage, but instead caused by a defective vaccine. When in fact, all evidence points to Samoa's measles outbreak happening because of the decline in vaccination rates. Only 31% of Samoans were vaccinated around the time of the outbreak, in part because of fears that spread last year after two infants died when nurses incorrectly mixed their vaccines with another medicine. 
Two nurses mixed vaccine powder with expired muscle relaxant anaesthetic instead of water. It wasn't the vaccine that killed those children. It was just a human error. Do you have any idea of how many cases of measles were in Samoa between, say, 1986 and 2019? I have no idea. Great, okay, I've got that. 1986, one case of measles, 93, 7, 2005, 0, 2006, 0, 2009, 0, and in 2019, there were 5,707 measles cases. Do you know what happened in 2019? Yeah, I'm aware there was a measles outbreak, but I didn't have anything, you know, I have nothing to do with, um, with people not vaccinating in Samoa. I never told anybody not to vaccinate. I didn't you know, go there for any reason to do with that. One news has learned of a high-level anti-vax meeting just before this deadly measles outbreak, a meeting between vaccination critic Robert Kennedy Jr. and anti-vax blogger Taylor Winterstein. Publicising her meeting with the high-profile Kennedy as profoundly monumental for her movement. This so-called anti-vaxxer, Edwin Tamaseze, he had promoted the use of vitamin C to cure the disease. During the country's two-day mass measles vaccination drive last week, he posted, I'll be here to mop up your mess, enjoy your killing sprees. But the government is fighting back. Edwin Tamaseze is now under arrest, charged with incitement against a government. The parents of the children who died from the vaccine mistake requested to speak on TV during the peak of the measles outbreak. What do you tell other parents who are still afraid of taking their children to get immunized? They really want to encourage parents to take their children to their immunization for the measles. Because acceptance of the MMR vaccine got to 94%, the measles outbreak in Samoa did come to an end. In fact, Samoa got their measles outbreak under control just before COVID broke out all over the world. But with COVID, Samoa took the public health advice and stopped all travel into and out of Samoa. And as of the end of 2021, they haven't had a single death from COVID. Thank you. So while in terms of science and decency, Samoa did end well, the measles outbreak that is, this is not what happened during and after COVID. While many hoped COVID might be the end of the anti-vax, anti-science movement, clearly we were wrong. They only got stronger and more ruthless, including holding their own rally next to the Capitol on January 6, 2021. Not, people, not many people know about this rally hosted by Dell Bigtree, most recently Robert Kennedy Jr.'s head of comms, where it seemed they wanted to attach their disinformation around public health to conspiracy theories and lies about the election being stolen. As Paul Offit says at the end of the January 6th scene, quote, once facts don't matter, once the truth doesn't matter, then it's not a democracy anymore. And this politicization of science is not only getting worse, it has created a terrible catch-22 for our science community. Those of us who want to defend and celebrate science are often told, be careful how you speak about public health. Don't make it political. Don't poke the bear. While at the same time, it seems we are seeing stories like this multiple, multiple times a month. So while antis continue to use politics to handcuff and shut down public health initiatives, we on the public health side are told not to be political. And I do mean we, as I've been told by some, we can't play this film because vaccines are political now. Seems that we're damned if we do or damned if we don't. And how about this strange, yet predictable turn? So, science community, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to let the bullies win? Or are we going to stand up and fight for science, verifiable truth, and decency? But before I send us crying into lunch, there is some hope, even if it's a fragile hope. The response to the film has been uh, a great honor. The overwhelming response for people who've seen Shot in the Arm has been very powerful, cathartic, emotional, and inspiring. The public health community is playing the film like crazy, and many have come on board as underwriters for our PBS run starting in November. Because like Neil deGrasse Tyson, they believe that 
If you guys don't know Kathleen Hall's work, this was a great honor to have her say this. Scott's demasking of Robert Kennedy Jr. is a public service. This timely project will save lives in the United States and around the world. Neil, shot in the arm is a vital rung in the ladder of science literacy that we all must ascend lest civilization teeter on the brink of collapse from its absence. So we have a lot more work to do. Um, I would be honored if you would contact me and my team on how we can collaborate on using our little film to counter disinformation with decency. Thank you very much.